All right, what's going on, everybody? And happy Wednesday, Sept- damn, September 22nd. <laughs> it was just September 1st the other day, but hey, we are here and uh, we are back, baby. It's, uh, it's our Wednesday live streams. Myself, we got our returning co host back tonight, and of course, my main man representing the East Coast that I'll bring in here in a bit. But hey, guys, welcome to tonight's stream. As you can see from the title, we're, we're talking what if. We got a pretty cool, fun party episode to kind of digest and kind of break into tonight that we'll kind of uh, get into here in a bit. But also, also, too, since you know this is a Thor centric type of episode, I figured that we just kind of talk about Thor, uh, talk about his films, talk about you know from worst to best, kind of our thoughts about the films, our, our thoughts on Thor as a character in the MCU, uh, what we hope to see in the future for the character, and of course, we'll dive deeper into tonight's episode, which was like I said, a lot of fun, a lot of cameos, and a pretty cool ending uh, that I'm so excited to break down with you all. But hey, with all that being said, before we uh, bring in my co host, if this is your first time tuning in, appreciate you joining us tonight. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that little thumbs up button helps out the algorithm spreads the uh the love for everyone to join in and, and join the conversation tonight as well as share the video Anyone you know that's into Marvel, uh, Party, and Thor, and all that stuff, go ahead and share that with them on your Instagrams, your Twitters, your TikToks of the world. That would be greatly appreciated. And, of course, in the live chat, let's have a fun time. Let us know your thoughts, your pros, your cons. Pitch in on your rankings when we talk about the Thor films, and let's have a good time. This is why we're doing it, to have a good time with you all, and I'm so excited to be here. So with all that being out of the way, got to bring in my co-host. We've missed this co-host. She has been covering TIFF for the last couple of weeks and been doing absolutely incredible in doing so. I'm definitely going to pick her brain on some of the films. Obviously, no spoilers, but so happy to have her back. So happy to kind of catch up with her and see what she's been thinking about the previous two episodes and, of course, tonight's episode. I'm talking about the one and only Amanda. What up? Ah, I'm so happy to be back. Oh, my God. I miss you guys so much. Um, You've been missed, Amanda. You've been missed. We missed you. We missed missed you. But we know you you had some things to do. You were covering a big uh, film festival. A little small independent film festival by the name of TIFF, right? Yeah, totally <laughs> small, not big at all. But yeah, yeah, it was it was a magical 10 days. I'm exhausted, yeah. so I'm going into like hibernation mode now. But um, <laughs> it was so much fun. I had a blast. No doubt. How many films would you say you, you got opportunities to see? I watched 25 Ooh. in 10 days. <laughs> that know. is insane. That it's is crazy. insane. Yeah. And would you say out of the 25 that a good percentage of them were pretty good films or were some of them a little like, eh, There were good. only, I think, like maybe three or four that didn't yeah. really sit right with me or else they they always pick gems, yeah. honestly. So I was I was pleasantly surprised with the 25 that I did pick. So, <laughs> And we're going to talk a yeah. little bit about some of those films here in a bit. But hey, Amanda, I'm so glad mm-hmm. to have you back tonight. If you want to let the people know where they can find you and what you're all about, stage is yours. Yeah, of course. Well, I love doing this with you guys every Wednesday. Uh, you guys can always find me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. I have my full TIFF festival coverage from Last Night in Soho to Dune to one of my favorite films from the festival, Belfast, directed by Kenneth Branagh. All of that coverage is at my, on my website, candidxcinema.com. So go check that out. I will have some YouTube reviews out. I did watch Dear Evan Hansen. And uh, that's that on that, but I'm excited to talk some Marvel uh, tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Definitely, guys. Check out her links. Check out those reviews for the the big, some of those films that she mentioned, you know, might be some Oscar films and some films to continue the conversation about. So definitely do so. And again, we'll we'll talk to Amanda here in a bit to kind of get her thoughts on some of those films she's mentioned. But before we do that, we've got my main man representing the East Coast, uh, doing some, you know, some sex education reviews recently. Uh, mm-hmm. Some, of course, Netflix coverage that he does such a great job in doing so. And uh, I'm so excited to hear his thoughts on tonight's episode of What If with Thor. I'm talking about my main man, Chris some taste take what's going on man gang 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 what's up we all doing the glasses today i hope everybody I yeah know. <laughs> very, studious, you know, very studious look here you know it's a party yeah, episode really. but we got to keep it <laughs> yeah, exactly. what's going on man it's good man i'm out here yeah man it's hey it's like i said it's september 22nd i could have sworn just mm-hmm. yesterday it was uh, you know august but now we're crazy. almost in spooky season which uh you know best I'm time wearing- of the year I'm wearing my stab hoodie from Scream. Oh, so. nice, nice. Oh, nice. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> uh, but Chris, man, uh, what's up, man? How you been doing, bro? I've been doing. Speaking of the spooky season, I don't know if y'all watched the trailer for uh, Night Teeth. I just saw that on Netflix. Have you guys seen Is that the trailer? vampire movie? Yeah, this yeah, dude's like, yeah. They're, like they're like their driver, like they're uber black or something like that. Yeah, Literally. man, this is um, this is the time of the year where you get the, yeah. the, the good ones and the weird ones and everything in between. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to start. 
I got to face my fears, man. Just start watching some horror movies. And just, it's weird yes. sad, Chris. It's, it's weird. so yeah. much fun. But just put the content out there, you know. Just, you, you need know. to like do live reactions of you oh, crying yeah. when you oh, watch. Yeah. We need that, Chris. We need that, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, man, how would you do the the fine folks out there a favor? Let them know what you're about and where they can find you, my friend. For sure, for sure. You guys know the vibes. It's your boy, Chris Tate. I represent Tate's Take. All my information is in the bio. I do YouTube reviews, TV shows, movies. Try to give you a little background on the content. Just let you know if I think it's worth checking out. If you're into that sort of thing, subscribe. If you're already subscribed, that's really fantastic. That's so cool. Wow. I'm um, really excited to talk this Marvel stuff. We only had a couple more episodes, so that's kind of like bittersweet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's 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 break this down. Yeah, man, we got a lot to discuss. Again, we'll, we'll get into my thoughts and your thoughts on the episode, but uh, nonetheless, we're, we're wrapping it up, man. What if has been a very interesting series that I think will uh, play bigger into the MCU? Uh, but you know, we'll leave that conversation for a little bit later. But man, I want to go back to you a little bit. You, you mentioned Tiff sure. in, in some yeah. films you had mentioned that definitely mm -hmm. gets me excited. Uh, first and foremost, mm -hmm. Doom. Um, it's my most anticipated year, my most anticipated movie, two years yeah. in, a, in a row now. Uh, <laughs> yes. My favorite director, I'm a fan of the cast. Just briefly, your your thoughts on this film and why people should be excited for it. And before you do that. And before I, we do that. Yeah. Before you do that, I really I really actually this on the internet, on Instagram or something like that, but mm -hmm. explain to me Dune hype. And like quickly, like I don't know where this came from. Like, is it a book and mm -hmm. an old movie? Like get take Both. me there. Especially Literally different. both. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this came out, it's Frank Herbert's book. So it is a series of books. So Frank Herbert wrote this and it came up before like Star Wars was created and like Game of Thrones was created. So this was like the first like sci-fi epic before those two kind of came out from, from what I've, I've read. And I read the book and I think that um, there is David Lynch's version of Dune and it's completely different from the book exactly what elliot's doing right now it's a thumbs down um <laughs> i refuse to watch it to be perfectly honest because i wanted to read it and then go in with bill Nev. so um i personally think that the hype around this is just because of this cast for right now it's a mixture so it's people who have read the book and have read the series and then it's basically this cast because it's a monster cast and they're fantastic and it's bill Nev doing sci-fi what he does best in my honest opinion um after arrival like arrival. like he's yeah arrival is like one of the best films i've ever Sold. seen so oh yeah so God. like it's so good and like Say he no takes more. that and he elevates what he did from arrival and even enemy if you've watched it, it's really good too with jake gyllenhaal so he takes all that elevates it in dune but this i'm telling you guys it is like an epic of all epics that like oh, it, we have, oh, I haven't boy. felt something like this. I don't even, I don't know when the last time I even felt like that emotion watching mm -hmm. something this, like it was such a grand scale mm -hmm. and it's just like, you're waiting for more and the anticipation's there for more. And that's what yeah. I loved about it. But it's like, it's massive. This is a blockbuster. You was gotta the watch movie it. Like a big deal. Like what did everyone love the movie or was the books the main thing? I think it's the books to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I think that's what's driving people, but mm -hmm. holy Lord, if you haven't listened to Hans Zimmer score too. Mm -hmm. I haven't, like, I've, I've, I've won an experience for the first time in the theater. I, I recommend that to be perfectly yeah. honest. Cause I like do like chills. Like I yeah. had goosebumps. I literally sat there in the theater cause I was like fourth row and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I was like sitting there like this. Cause like you're in the movie, it's crazy. Yeah. But honestly, like the costume design, the score, everything, it's like perfect. It's perfect yeah. for what the book is too. I'm, I'm happy. As someone who read the book, I think it's the best way they could have adapted it at nice. this point too. Nice. So yeah, I kind of rambled, but yes, the like film, the film festival, do they have like IMAX screens or is it like just regular screens? I was very fortunate to watch it in IMAX. IMAX. I didn't, it I didn't expect it. Too, right? <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, I didn't it was, expect yeah. it. So at TIFF, we have like here in Toronto, we have something called the Cinesphere. So it's like a massive IMAX screen. Like it's m like massive. It's so big. And that was like one of our like OG IMAX screens. So I couldn't watch it there, but that's where they had the premiere. Um, but our IMAX screen at Scotiabank was like, I think 400 people that you could fit in there, like more than that. But yeah. Watch her on the big screen. Dune is exactly oh, what you want. Yeah. And like, it's just 
it's just epic. I can't, I can't, I'm not, I can't spoil anything. <laughs> the sure, cast is sure. phenomenal. The yeah. like action scenes are good. So yep. it's just last yeah. question. Yes. <laughs> the the person yeah, I forgot you told who's the author of this. Is that person dead or were they allowed to, or are they still able to like be a part of this? I think Frank Herbert passed yeah, away. Passed away. Yeah. Well, I think in the nineties or something yeah. like that, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't get me more hyped about it, Amanda, as you mentioned, uh, I've never read good, the novels. She did a okay. phenomenal job. At no doing spoilers. So guys, check out her, you know, her <laughs> website to get more in depth on that. Um, and I, I'm excited to see a review on it as well, but yeah, yeah I, I, um, someone mentioned in chat, I think it was either Nate or, or CG in regards to just the foundation of a lot of stuff. Like Amanda mentioned star Wars, star Trek, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those big sci-fi films have taken yeah. a lot of inspiration from Frank Herbert's, uh, doom, which gets, you know, is obviously, um, um, great to see someone like Denis Villeneuve bring that story to life. But no offense, David Lynch, you know, great director, but I just think it wasn't the right fit for him. Right. Uh, if you if you ever see the film, Amanda, <laughs> trust me, it's it's a hoot. <laughs> it is a right. film that is so cheesy and corny yeah. and, and, and just bad. But I believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's on HBO Max. If you guys ever want to check it out, the uh, eighty four version of Doom. But no, I'm really excited for it. Uh, IMAX all day. Or, you know, some people might watch on HBO Max, which, you know, to each their own, but I will be in theaters uh, 22nd, October 22nd, right? October yeah. 22nd. If okay. you can do the pre-screening, do the pre-screening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to try to see that as early as possible and, yeah. and, and, and then see it that night and come home when it's on HBO Max and watch yes. it 20 more it's times true. before the end of the day. But I'm really excited for it. I really appreciate you sharing that with us, Amanda. And there was a couple, couple other films, uh, Last Night in Soho. Uh, the new, uh, yes. um, my man's name is slipping my mind right now. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, yeah. yeah. Um, Anna Taylor Joy and uh, Mackenzie. How, how's that film? Speaking of spooky season, it was great. Yeah. It was just so beautiful to look at. It, oh my god! And the the performances, they're great. The story's really good. Mm -hmm. Um. It unfolds kind of naturally. It's more like suspenseful than and that it has horror elements, which I loved about it. It's yeah. more of a ghost story. Um, and uh, yeah, like Edgar Wright literally wrote a letter. It's like, if you've seen it, do not ruin that ending. And I will yeah. not ruin that ending. But mm -hmm. for, for women, I think they're going to, it's going to connect with them a bit differently. It did for me. Because mm -hmm. um, I literally couldn't sleep after I watched it. So it's it's more of like, the, you know, generational, I guess, trauma or like, mm -hmm. like for women in that case, yeah. I, I can't really like, it says it in the synopsis and in the trailer, so I'm not going to yeah. like spoil it, but for it sure. really does hit. And then that, that ending, that twist is just, is perfect okay. for me. I yeah, really twist. enjoyed it. What a it twist. Was fun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a good twist. I think it was a good twist for what it was. Yeah. I think. And I know people love look. Edgar Wright. Um, is this, would you say, best film? Okay. okay. I don't want to say it, but like, yes. Hey, I I'll be honest. I'm not like, I know a lot of people like go crazy for Edgar Wright. And I, I appreciate him as director, um, but I, I don't, you know, I, but I, I hear yeah. like for what you just said, I heard this is his best film yet. And, I, and it gets me excited because I want, I'm excited to see him do something a little bit different from kind of the, yeah. the comedy beats we've seen. And obviously the stuff that he did with the, the zombie flicks and all that, but I'm really excited for that one. Chris, did you have any questions about last night in <laughs> Soho, man? No, I was going to ask about probably like a, Cheesy, sad movie. The Star. That's here. Did you watch the Star? Is that Starling, part of it? Oh, um, is that a uh, Melissa McCartney? Film? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't get the chance to go see it or watch yeah. it on the digital platform, but uh, I do have it from Netflix currently sitting in my gotcha. my content. So I'll probably end up watching that. I heard good things about it from what yeah. I know. I didn't. Yeah, there there were a lot of like romantic films at TIFF that I was just sitting there like, <laughs> I was like, you're gonna make me think about this the whole day. So I was like, yeah, I just uh, there were some good ones, you know. So, and then two more questions. There was yeah. a film, um, something about a car, a woman having like a relationship with a car. I can't think of the name of it. Oh uh, my god, Titan. Titan. Yeah. Did you get a chance to see that one? Oh my god. So that was the first one That's where right, yeah. like. And, and if you can went, explain it to him, man, I, I poorly butchered the synopsis. Like, what's that film about oh for those that might not be familiar with it? Don't even worry. So this is <laughs> like, when I mean next level, we we have something that's called Midnight Madness at TIFF. Yeah. So we get like the most batshit crazy mm -hmm. things happening during those midnight screenings. So this is one of them. So Titania is basically about this, this young girl who gets in a car accident mm -hmm. and she has, um, she has to have a plate installed in her head to actually like function in mm. in you know 
in the real world and in life. So she has like a, her spine and everything. Like it's all like made of like titanium or, or whatever the, the metal was, but that's mm, vibranium. Ba your, <laughs> that's how she has to like function. So like you see it on the side of her, you see the play, whatever. I, anyway, she gets, she, you know, she gets older and um, she's very out there. That's all I can say. She's very mm. out there. I literally cannot tell you what this movie is about other than the fact that she got, you know, she got into a car accident when she was a kid. Because if I start going into it, I'm, I'm going to spoil it. And gotcha. I can't do that for you guys. Gotcha. Gotcha. But she has a connection with cars and motorcycles and stuff like that. She loves yeah. cars. That's all mm -hmm. I'm going to say. Yeah. And there's body horror. There's like, very intimate scenes. Yeah, I've heard just, it. It's pretty. Um, it yeah. one of those. Yeah, one of those kind of like okay, this yeah. is not for the kids. It, <laughs> right, it's so. violent. The gore. Like I was literally cringing. I was sitting there like, don't do this. Don't do yeah. this. Don't it. Like it. And I watched it on the IMAX screen, yep. which I didn't expect at all. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, okay I'm in this movie. Running. Yeah, yeah, but it's <laughs> phenomenal. Like it's just so ballsy. And yeah. oh god, I haven't stopped thinking about it. So it's it's a good one. For sure. I'm excited. Then one last yeah. one. You mentioned yeah. your favorite film. Um, yes. One more time. What was the name of that film? Be Belfast. Belfast. Why yeah. Kenneth Branagh? I, I'm not familiar with that one. What's, what's that? Is that sounds like a drama, if I'm not mistaken. It is. So, so Belfast, <laughs> I, it, Belfast was the surprise of the festival for me. I didn't expect it. Um, yeah. So Kenneth Branagh said that this was his passion project. Mm. Um, so it's loosely not, based. Not Artemis Fowl? I thought that was his passion. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't direct that. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, but that was his passion project and yeah. it was loosely based off of his own childhood. Okay. So okay. for me, it was like, I'm a sucker for those kind of stories mm -hmm. because especially when it's like heavily involved with like the director and he's, you know, he made his own story come to life. And I thought that was really beautiful. Yeah. Um, there's really great emotional moments, comedic moments between him and his family. Um, and then there's just like, what really got me, it wasn't even like the emotional moments with the family. It was mm. him like just showing what it's like to be a kid in the cinema again and experiencing your favorite movies through the eyes of, I can't, look. Um, it, it was just, it was really awesome to experience that as a kid again, like on the big screen, like everything that you really like admire and loved about cinema. Yeah. And then you see him as a kid experiencing this. And then it's like, well, Kenneth Branagh is now a filmmaker, so yeah, that yeah. connection makes you emotional. So, nice. I really is, is he in the it. film as well? He's not in the film; he just okay, directed good. it. Just but it's Jamie. Out. It's Jamie Dornan who plays his, his dad essentially, and then um, um, uh, Fifty Shades, right? Is that that's Jamie Dornan? Fifty Shades, okay. yeah. And then yeah, uh, Katrina. Right. I mean, to throw that. <laughs> he's a really good actor. No, no, no yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's yeah. he's great. And then yeah. uh, Katrina Balfe from Outlanders in it, so she's she's really awesome. Oh, too. okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a great cast, yeah. a lot of fun. I, I I don't know how people are gonna take it, but uh, I it have sounds is really good. It sounds like yeah. it, like a Honey Boy type of you know reflection of life type of situation, mm -hmm. which I'm always up uh, up for that type of film. So hey, yeah. guys, that's just three of the films that Amanda saw. And as you guys heard up top, she saw 25 of those things. So definitely check her uh, website out. Uh, yeah, she right. got some good, good video reviews coming up pretty soon yes. for you all. So definitely show us some love and support. Thank and I appreciate you sharing that with us, Amanda. And toss it to you before we dive into tonight's stream, Chris. There was a show, and I'm not, Amanda, I don't know if you got a chance to check it out yet, but um. Sex Education, Chris. Yeah. Tell us about it, man. We got a season three that just dropped last week. And uh, before we get into it, Chris, I just need to know, Team Mev <laughs> or Team Ruby? Take it over, my friend. Well, you know, I don't I don't want to sound disloyal to Mev. <laughs> um, <gasps> no, I will. I will. Yeah, Ruby. Ruby, all day. Ruby, 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 <laughs> Ruby showed me a lot this season. I ain't gonna hold yeah, it. man. Ruby showed me a lot. I mean, she showed me a lot at the end of last season. I was like, oh, yeah. Really? How'd you yeah. get that? Um, I like, hope you don't get that. Hope you don't get that. Um, nah, yeah, he got that. Uh, yeah, but I was like, I was very impressed with Ruby this season. Mm -hmm. I love Maeve because she was like really like a badass. She got a little softer this season, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and she started wasting her time with uh, Isaac. Ugh, freaking weirdo. But um, liar. Yeah. Liar. I'm, yeah. I'm team. I'm team. I'm always gonna be team Maeve. I can't. I can't be disloyal. But Ruby. Yeah. Is, like, really? Ruby is. She was Amanda. Did you get a chance? I know you super been super busy. Did you get a chance to watch Sex Education yet, season three? I watched the first episode. Okay, gotcha. so I kind of I know okay. I know what's happened. No, no, no. It's already yeah. been like 
the timeline's the timeline on Twitter. Like you don't right, watch right, something right. the first day, like you're gonna know everything. Then yeah. exactly. So yeah. I kind of know why people are like annoyed and stuff. But like Ruby's pretty cool. So she's I'm very just, cool this season. I'm gonna switch cool. over. And hope sure. we got a new uh, head mistress, which was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah. That was a really yeah. good, really good show. If you guys haven't seen Sex Education quite yet, season three is is fantastic, uh, and I recommend you all check it out. If you, of course, if you've seen the first two seasons. So, mm -hmm. hey, those are you know kind of our, our thoughts on some of the things we recently saw. I will say before we dive into it, ladies and gentlemen, I know Chris, you're not a horror guy. Midnight Mass coming out this Friday on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Mike yep. Flanagan saying it right now, masterpiece. Oh wow, it is it fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that this Friday again for all my horror fans. And even, you know what, Chris? I, someone that's not really into horror, man, I still think someone, I still think I would recommend it, man. I, I really would because it's more, it's more about the scares and, and all that. It's, it's more about just religion and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, forgiving yourself and just belief systems and what people do to, you know, follow into someone's footsteps. It's, it's a lot deep stuff going on the show on yeah. top of some good scares at the same time so yeah my plan again man he, he's he's one of the best out there doing it to me best. right now give it a word. i love him check it out man but ladies and gentlemen those are our kind of our thoughts on some stuff we recently <laughs> seen some stuff we recommend you all check out but let's get into some marvel love man we got some some mcu stuff to talk about tonight and again there wasn't a ton of news which whenever that happens uh when it's like a slow week i'd imagine next week is going to be like trailer for miss uh <laughs> miss marvel uh you know new casting for fantastic four we're gonna probably yeah. get bombarded with uh you know spider-man Charlie Cox is on set or something like that. So uh, yeah. I expect that next week. But we we figure we'll talk about some Thor since it is a Thor-centric episode. And I uh just kind of curious for the uh my uh co-host as well as everyone in the chat. Thor movies. We, we got three of them things, and we got a fourth one coming out. It's the only Avenger to have four films, which is mm -hmm. uh says a lot for the mm -hmm. Thor character. He's been through it. Uh Kenneth Branagh, uh Aaron Taylor, uh Taika Waititi, the Russo brothers, and now he's been directed by five different uh directors, which is uh yeah. you know good for Chris Hemsworth to be able to play in that world of Thor. But Starting with you, Amanda, the question is from worst to best, and we'll just give our first two and then we'll cap off in one. Um, Thor films. We got three of them. <clears throat> yeah. Some good ones. Maybe some not so good ones, but I'm just curious. You're number three as far as the Thor films that we got so far. What is the worst Thor film in your opinion? It's obviously Thor the Dark World, and I don't want to say that, but it is Thor the Dark World. Um, they had some great moments between him and Loki, uh, and I think that's why I love it so much. Just their brotherly mm -hmm. banter is what holds it together for me, but it's not the best Thor movie. So that's at number three for me. Number three. And then what about your number two, which I think we... Well, I don't know. I I mean, don't know. Sometimes we're going to be throwing some curveballs in there. Um, num yeah. Number two is Ragnarok. Let's like I said, sometimes she throws me exactly. Say, she doesn't like Ragnarok, so <laughs> you knew you knew I was gonna say it. Um, and obviously, like Sir Kenneth Branagh was obsessed with Thor, so I'm really happy that he got a chance to direct it. So that's my first one. I just I think that he really nailed the grand scale of Asgard and showing us Asgard, and that's what I love the most about it. It was just so beautiful what he did with it. Yeah. Um, and I wish we got to see a bit more of Asgard in the way that <laughs> Branagh did it. So yeah. Thor was great. It's a great intro. Hemsey's awesome. And we, mm -hmm. you know, we got Loki. <laughs> so Loki. yeah. Give me more. Anthony, like exactly. One of my favorite parts. But yeah. uh yeah, Thor's number one for me. Number one, okay. Uh, Chris, man, tossing to you, man. Your your least favorite to your favorite Thor films, and uh, you know, if you want to give reasons why, go right ahead, man. Yeah, I'll keep it quick. My the least favorite is is the Dark World, but it's not whack. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a lot better than people give it credit for. I, I recently I tried to re I watched the three of them again because of uh, Loki before Loki came out. So yeah. I, was little, I was like, oh wow, this movie's, you know, when Thor came out part one, I was like. You know, it's early in MCU. I was like, you know, growing up as a kid, I didn't know Thor. So I was like, okay, this is fine. This is like a good movie. Like, I I, I get what's happening here. Yeah. Um. So Thor Dark World, I remember seeing the theaters. I'm like, okay, cool. This is some stuff. And then going back to it, like you see, like a lot of the lo a lot of Loki stuff is big in that movie. His mom dies in that movie. I don't know why people don't act like that was a big moment. And then Ragnarok, I just love, I love, um, you know, I love the director. You know, I love Korg. I love seeing Hulk in it. I love Tessa. I just, I love, just, I love the the risk that they took. I was like, oh yeah. wow, like this dude is funny now. Um, 
I don't like so what, is it, what are they called? Fat Thor? <laughs> I don't like. Fat I Thor. hate Fat Thor. Fat Same. Thor. I can't stand it. Throw me off. I yeah. like Damn. Thor. I don't want them to get too caught up in that because, like, Thor showed that he could be funny in Ragnarok. I like that. Yeah. He mm -hmm. showed that he could be funny in Infinity War. Mm -hmm. um, but then Endgame, it took it too. It took it too far. And then I thought that yeah. in the end fight at Endgame that he would turn into normal Thor again. And he did not. Same. Kept those pounds, bro. <laughs> so that's where I, I I do love Thor as as a character, but I don't want them to like wait. Like this episode is like what I didn't want. <laughs> so that's my ranking for the Same. movies. Thor Ragnarok number one is my yeah. favorite. <clears throat> then Thor one. It's like yeah. whatever. And then Thor two, which is also like whatever to me. Like the, yeah. they're, they're fine. Fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm same list as Chris there. For me, number three is uh, Dark World. And, and I honestly, it's been a minute. I haven't seen Dark World in, in a while. I think for me, just kind of trying to remember a lot of the stuff that's going on, I think it, it kind of loses itself kind of in that second half for me because I think Amanda touched on it. What Aaron uh, Taylor did, who was the director of uh, a lot of Game <laughs> of Thrones episodes, he did uh, Genesis which we won't talk about that film, but he's a really good director. But I think that he actually like allowed us to sit in, in um, you know, Asgard for a little bit. We had that family drama. There was some space stuff going on, space fights and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But then I think that's where Marvel kind of put their their heavy hand of comedy in in the in the dark world with Thor and, and Loki or trying to escape uh, Asgard and and everything on Earth in Thor two to me is so whack. Uh, <laughs> Selvik and his wackiness, Jane Foster and Thor never had <clears> chemistry <throat> to me. Uh, Darcy was funny, but it was just like now she has an assistant that's trying to be funny. And, and like I said, yeah. once they went to that second half and went to Earth, everything on yeah. Asgard was dope. Once he went to Earth, to me, is where it kind of lost his momentum. But like you mentioned, Chris, there are some big moments. You know, the mom dies. Mm -hmm. Loki shows his true colors when he's in the. I'll, I'll never forget that scene when he was in the prison and he's like pretending yeah. to be like he's okay, mm -hmm. but then he like actually shows that it, it really did affect him. Uh, and that was the first time in a long time we saw him in that mindset because obviously he's coming off of Thor and an Avenger. So. It has its moments, but it just kind of lost me towards the end. But that brings me to my number two, which is the first Thor, like Amanda said. That was like, to me, maybe the most truest version of Thor in regards to some of the comic book accuracy, the more mm -hmm. Shakespearean yeah. and more seriousness. He did have yeah. some funniness. Again, the fish out of water stuff that we've seen a million times when he's coming to Earth and give me a horse and all that stuff. And <laughs> all that stuff is fun, but it's, it, it is kind of a weird film. It's just like, it doesn't even feel like, it's that phase one film where it's just kind of like, yeah. it's not Marvel. It's, it doesn't even have like a lot of Marvel obviously tie-ins or whatnot. <clears> to me, the it end, feels it older than like it is. It does. It feels like almost like early 2000s type of uh, uh, yeah. comic book film. Even like when, like the way they shoot it and the it was Destroyer was the, the villain yeah. towards the so end. Like Iron Man one doesn't feel as old as Thor one. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally yeah. agree. And it's a it's a well put together film. Again, just like the again, the Shakespearean aspect of it, the more serious nature. Uh, I think that was you know uh, Anthony Hopkins as, as Odin was really bringing in, and when he ba banished his son, that whole thing. And I can't even do it in my Anthony Hopkins impersonation. <laughs> like he's just so serious, and you like yeah. you took him. And also Loki, it was man. My birthright. I, yeah, and, and Loki was oh badass God. in that film. Very kinesis, so very uh, god of mischief. That might, besides Avengers, that yeah. might have been the most like deceiving, most you know, villainous side of Loki that we saw. Yeah. So I got love for the first Thor, but like my man Chris said, it's Ragnarok for me, man. And and to a man's point, the more and more I see Ragnarok, I revisit a lot. I think it's the funniest Marvel film. But when you look at the film as far as just like MCU and, and serious nature, it, it, there are some moments I know Amanda would attest to this that it kind of undercut it with a little joke and the most improv uh, Marvel film, I think, that they said that you know, Taika Waititi was letting them just riff and just have, which is fun, right? You want to have a yeah. fun time, especially Chris Hemsworth playing the character for so many years. You want to do something new, but it has its flaws, but it's fun. It, it, yeah. it is probably one of the most fun movies in the mcu uh at least yeah, in phase like, three the most like I, that's like a super yeah. rewatchable it's like exactly that, like, man. they're just like they're just all, well, infinity war in infinity, just, infinity, infinity war yeah yeah but Ragnarok to me is just, and then throwing in Hulk, you know, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Hulk in the MCU, it's just, he's a joke <laughs> at this point. But seeing yeah. Hulk and Thor fighting was pretty cool. As you mentioned, Tessa Thompson mm -hmm. as Valkyrie was cool. You know, you can't go wrong with Mr. Uh, 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 Jeff Goldblum as, as the Grandmaster. <laughs> oh, I put you to death. <laughs> like, there's some, <laughs> some really good comedic beats in there. Uh, so it's a fun film. And Hella can't disrespect, you know, Kate Blanchett. She was pretty badass in that film. So, 
I wanted more. <sighs> <I'm> with, <laughs> do, do you think we'll get more of her in the in the MCU I don't, some I mean, way somehow? Variant version of her. Or? I hope so. I think she was like underused in Ragnarok, to be perfectly yeah. honest, because there were so many people in Ragnarok. Like that yeah, was another reason why Surter, I was like, Surge. Uh, it's a lot. So much, so much going yeah. on, so much going on. I but. Get it. To, and this kind of brings me to my next point, and Chris kind of touched on it a little bit in regards mm -hmm. to the, where they're taking the characters, starting with you, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Not so much in the Thor vein or Hulk vein when they're disrespecting the character. Is he the Hulk? Is he Bruce Banner? Is he a professor? Is, you know, Shang-Chi, spoiler, you know, he's now Bruce again. But yeah. how do you feel about Thor and the progression of the character? Is it too funny at this point? Is, is Have we forgotten that he is the God of Thunder uh, and, and he needs a hammer in one movie, he needs an axe in one movie, he doesn't need it in the next movie? How are you feeling about the progression mm -hmm. of the character? I think Thor is the most inconsistent um, writing-wise. They want him to be the butt of all the jokes. He They give him all the lines like to make those jokes and I think that mm -hmm. they don't know how to write him anymore. Um, and that's why I'm really nervous about Love and Thunder because again, like Ragnarok's not my favorite for that reason. They made him like way too funny. And I personally think like, I loved him in the first Thor. Mm -hmm. I loved him in like the first Avengers. And then I loved him in Age of Ultron with the little screen time that he had, but it still felt like source material Thor and that comedy worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody necessarily, but for me, that worked for what he was as the God of Thunder. Like, yeah. I think him being like, buddy, buddy, hey, dude, just reduces him to a normal person. Mm -hmm. And that's not who Thor is. And that's what's bothering me about like, you know, the progression of his character. So I'm not vibing it, unfortunately. That's just me. So I know that's like controversial because everyone no, loves him I, now. I know a lot but of people like, that feel like that feel the same way as you do, man. If yeah. I'm being honest, yeah. That's that's where I'm at with this. So Love and Thunder yeah. is just, oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> to put a little optimism on Love and Thunder, this will be the first time that Thor or Chris Hemsworth has had a director direct him in two, ex, you know, exact, you know, consecutive films versus right. you know, obviously going from Kenneth <clears throat> to Aaron to Taika to the Russo. So I think there, you right. know, it might not be the flavor you like of Thor. At least we'll have yeah. maybe some consistency from Hopefully. Ragnarok to that, and and yeah. obviously he'll have a he'll be in a different mindset, not being the king of Asgard anymore, and maybe losing some of those uh, love handles too might uh you know bring him <laughs> back. But same question for you, Chris, in regards to just your thoughts on the progression from. 2011 to you know where we are now coming into his film next year with love and thunder man are, are you a fan of what they've done with them do you wish it was more serious and comedy was maybe uh not a top priority for the character yeah he definitely i'm sure i think a manager said this but i think he, he obviously changed the most uh, like out of all the other ones like 100 yeah, yeah. Like iron man iron man one is pretty much iron man and and end game just yeah you yeah you know Deader. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, <Oof. laughs> just, Spoilers. No, too soon. Too soon. Too too soon. soon. Um, but yeah, like, I was like, as, as a as a Ragnarok lover, like I was, I was, I was so on board with that. And then just to see him, like I don't think it was too funny and too goofy seeing him interact with the Guardians either. I thought that was on brand. Mm -hmm. um, like the shit, he was just he was it was being realistic. Like you're just reacting to like like look at the Guardians. Like you like you can't not be funny. Like this is. Like this guy, like this call this guy the rabbit, and got the eye, and then fucking Drax mm. is doing drag shit. So it's like, I get it. Yeah. Oh, it was an elective on Asgard. Cool. Got it. Whatever. Risky. Yeah. But this, if this episode is any indication, then I would be worried about Love and Thunder. Before that, then I would, I thought they would have reined it in no matter what, because I don't think we needed any more Fat Thor or like Weird Thor. <laughs> um, and I feel like this movie, they want to. I know it's Thor's movie, but I feel like we're going to get less Thor in a weird way because of um, the other characters. I, yeah. I feel that. Yeah, no, I feel <laughs> you. a lot of characters in this next film, guys. Yeah. 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 So that's where I'm at with that. I trust him. This, ep this episode just, we're not talking about the episode yet, but I was like, what's happening with this guy? Why are they doing the, this guy like this? Yeah. I mean, you guys bring up a lot of good points. Um in regards to the progression of the character, I think Chris Hemsworth for for because to be honest with you all, he's a funny dude. Um, it wasn't until wow, it was a terrible movie, The Family Vacation. I can't remember that the 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 name Vacation with, uh, Ed Helms. It was just yeah, yeah. legit vacation. He yeah. was the he stole the movie from me. So um, funny, so funny, and then even Ghostbusters, which I'm not a fan of that film, but I thought that he was pretty oh, funny in that. Um, okay. 2016's Ghostbusters, so and then just oh, Man I mean, Black was very bad though. 
Oh, I yeah, we don't I have not seen that film yet. I have yet you to watch Men in Black. Black. No, I think I watched the, half the, an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah the course, top, I did not see it. It did not appeal to me at all, man. Like, I'm it's like, it's terrible. Just, yeah, that's so bad. That movie is so bad, but it's it's worth it enough to see the little alien, Kumel. He, it's the, like yeah, I remember it's that. It's just a waste. Like he's so good in that movie, but the uh, the rest of the movie is so trash. So if you're like super bored ever, just see just I watch my boy Kumail. Really that bored but to watch. My it. God, that movie's so bad. And I'll, it wasn't Chris fault. But. Yeah, is it, who was that? Gary, Gary F. Gray that directed that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Thor. To, well, Chris Hemsworth was a funny dude, and I think once he got his hands, well, Taika Waititi got his hands on on his sensibilities as a as a, as a comedian, and also I think Amanda and Chris touched on it. The Guardians effect. When Guardians hit the way it did, and we went to space, and James Gunn, and, yeah. and the jokes just start flying. And like, hey, if we can, if we can make these a, a, a raccoon in a tree uh, have some funny bits, and, and Drax, let's let's bring some of that flavor over to uh, Thor. And I don't know if it's completely worked yet. If I'm being honest with you all, and it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Which kind of brings us to this last point. The future of this character, and also too, someone had mentioned. I don't know how you guys feel about uh, Himdel and uh, uh, Mister Idris Elba. I, I think we can all agree he was um, unfortunately not used to the best of his uh, his abilities. Uh, it hurts. That there it, it is. It actually yeah. hurts. Do you guys think that the directors could have done more? yes, one hundred percent? Taika tried to give him something to do, but still, ultimately, you know, very next film he dies. So yeah. it makes me sad. Yeah, but but uh, hey, DC. Uh, you yes. know, Flood Sport it was like he's going to be having something to do for the next few years, at least hopefully. We know how DC Fingers is, Amanda. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, <laughs> toss it and see you first. Just the future yeah. of the character. Chris alluded to it. Love and Thunder is coming out next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I have a picture that I want to bring up because we, we were talking about the uh, not being the biggest fan of Mr. Uh, you know, bigger Thor, uh, depressed <laughs> Thor. He's in shape. He, he's, he's in the Thor. Yeah, he's actually. This is the biggest I think he's ever been for the character. So he's uh he's he's working out in this episode. Him and, yeah. and Org. He's been lifting those rocks for twenty hours a day. So he's gonna be back in shape. But if you guys see some of the, um, I'm gonna go back a little bit. <clears throat> This cast is stacked. I mean, we have Natalie Portman's coming back as uh, as we expect to be uh, Lady Thor. We have Christian Bale, ladies and gentlemen, as Gorg, uh, the God Killer. You know, Tyka's right. back. Russell Crowe, Tessa's back. Uh, <sighs> Matt Damon is going to be a little cameo the, when they do the whole play thing. So, <laughs> Amanda, Love and Thunder. A lot of folks going to be in this movie. Are we looking at Thor kind of taking a back seat and passing it on to Jane Foster? Yes. That the, 100%. That yeah. I personally think he's going to die in this one. Oh, they killing him? I, I don't know what it is. I have it like right here that he's going to die because it's Ooh. it's called Love and Thunder. So if something yeah. has to happen with Jane Foster, mm -hmm. that's the love of his life, whatever they're going to try to sell it to us after she was gone for a majority of the time. Because yeah, Ali Portman's like, nah, I'm not doing this. Fired herself from the MCU for exactly. five years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I have a strong feeling that there's going to be some sacrifices. He could die. I like. I, I honestly, there's not much more that you can do with him. To be perfectly honest, and I don't know how much more mm. they they you know how they're gonna. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think that there's any room for him to go. Mm. I think we've seen everything is full potential, especially in Ragnarok. That's yeah. the one thing that. I love that Taika did was that we saw him at full power majority of the time. So like, I really enjoyed that, but it's like, I'm not, I don't know. I think he, I think he's going to die. That's where I'm at right now. And you think Natalie Portman is going to come in and well, uh, to be fair, I mean, we've seen that so far in phase four, whether it be, um, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, we got, uh, um, you know, uh, Sam now officially cap, uh, mm -hmm. low key, we've got Sylvia in the mix. Kate Bishop's going to be the new Hawkeye, uh, iron heart. Uh, I mean, the she Hulk's going to probably replace Ruth Banner. So there is, they're, they're showing signs that, Hey, yeah. out with the old in and with the new. So yeah. I don't know. Does is, would Natalie Portman want to come back and play that character for for this next phase? You think? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Because we also have Valkyrie, like in Valkyrie you know, in the mix. Yeah, we could have like a romance between them. We don't know. That's the rumor out there. Yeah, so, I've heard that. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see, Chris. <laughs> man, to follow that up, man. Your thoughts on the future of Thor? Is is it the end for Mister Hemsworth uh, wrapping it up and, and Natalie taking on the Mjolnir and, and being a Thor for this next phase? 
Yeah, I mean, I hope I don't want to see him die, but that's just because I'm emotional and I don't want to lose. But, <laughs> Says the guy that doesn't cry. Exactly, right? right? <laughs> yeah, but I like to see snitches and yeah. love. <laughs> um, no, but I, I was gonna say the same thing you you're gonna you just said, E. Um, it is the out with the old and with the new. It's like the OGs yeah. after you lose Iron Man, you lose yeah. Captain America, you lose the widow. Hulk, no one really Hawkeye cares about right unfortunately. Corner, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so worrying on Hulk, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like it makes sense that it would be time. And then Hulk, I mean, he probably he's probably at that phase where he's like, I've done it, I've done it all. Like, I'm I'm cool to move on from this guy. Um, I, of course, as a fan, I'm greedy and I want to see him, but I, I yeah. wouldn't be mad if, if this was it. Like, we we've got a lot of content, so we'll see, man. Because I'm telling you what. Robert Downey Jr. I love Chris Evans, uh, Chris Evans, but anyone that steps out of side of those MCU bounds, they they don't really hit like they think they are hidden. So I don't know if, if Chris Hemsworth is smart enough to be like, hey, I'll play in this arena as long as you all will have me. Uh, I don't want to end up like Doolittle uh, and, and, and fail at the box office. And I mean, he has his a, a, a track. He probably uh, has a better franchise. chance though of doing of doing. That's okay. true. That's true. We'll see though, man. I mean, I, I, I want to see more of Thor. I, I think there's, I still think there's a little bit more meat on the story for Thor. You know, Beta Ray Bill's out there. Um, you know, we still haven't gotten, a, we haven't even scratched the surface of the intergalactic side of the MCU with now the Eternals coming in the mix and, you know, Galactus and the Fantastic Four. So Thor, I mean, you can mix him in. I mean, Amanda, you wouldn't love to see Thor having a conversation with someone from the X-Men, that someone that can control Thunder by the name of Storm and, and, and Magneto and just Thor having riffing with back you know that would be pretty pretty it would it would be great depending on <laughs> when the be. hell we're getting the know, x-men right? <laughs> because chris hemsworth can be like in his 60s by the time we get it at this point so it's i feel cool. you no i completely get it it's just i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know the timeline we don't know anything at this point but like if we keep him around i'm out of all of them i do agree that like for fun purposes and he takes yeah. a back seat. I think he can just make cameos from now on to moving yeah, forward. Like fun. that'll, that'll work if they're not going to kill him, but like, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Did Thor, and this is, I don't know why this probably did Thor interact with Spider-Man at all in uh infinity war and, or in game. Do they have any conversations? I can't. Mm, not that I can think mm, of. No. The whole time he was in space. He went to Wakanda. Yeah. I don't think they have most of the time he spent in game. He was in the compound. Yep. crying when they were trying to you know do yeah. all like the plan <laughs> he was Spider sulking was, in the Spider-Man <laughs> Spider was in there i yeah. would love to see thor and, and peter have a conversation about i don't know yeah. maybe a, a a guy in a black symbiote suit and how they can fight to take him down i don't know can't wait for venom yeah. anyways we'll, we'll see <laughs> so then, guys, uh let us know i appreciate everyone joining in on the conversation uh and and giving you all Giving us your thoughts on the, the films and, and and the character so far, and what you guys hope to see from the character moving forward. Because I don't know, man. I, I like Thor. I like my mean hell. My my, my dog's name Thor. Uh, and I, and I like Chris Hemsworth. So I would love to see what they do with the character moving forward. And we need a uh, we need a we'll slideshow uh, pick up your dog Thor. You got all these pictures queued up. How you don't have Thor queued up? Hey, man, he's right here. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's normally walking around the place all the time, like he owns it, which he does. Uh, but yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts on Mr. Hemsworth and and Thor. And, and love and thunder and all that fun stuff, uh, but this is this is something I thought was just very funny. We talk about it a lot on this on this stream about celebrities and not knowing when to shut up and how to uh, you know answer certain questions. I don't know if you all saw this, but I thought this was like straight up one of the funniest things I saw. It was either this week or last week, but um, an actor by the name of uh, Topher Grace. You guys might remember him. That <laughs> seventy show he played Venom, uh, you know, in Spider Man three. And uh, I don't know if you all can see on the screen. I'm gonna try to read it from here. But essentially, someone I think this was on a Reddit thread. And he literally this is him. Topher uh, Topher Grace did respond to this person accent about if he's going to be in the next spider-man film and <laughs> he simply replied by saying please keep this between me and you yes i'm in it uh the plot starts off with peter parker tom holland uh being bummed that everyone knows about his identity and some crazy shit happens and dr strange and dr octopus uh, uh doc op comes into the mix into the dimension then electro and green goblin hop out of one of these energy circles and they're like it's spider-man it's stomping time then tom hardy and i pop up uh and we battle each other and he says he wins of course because he's the better venom uh it's not even like a fight 
it's getting so small. I'm trying to go into it. Not <laughs> to give too much away, but it's some actors from the original 70s Spider Man, Aquaman, Batman, uh, Affleck, not Keaton, crossover. And uh, yeah, he pretty much just says, keep it between me and you. Mm -hmm. The reason I want to bring that up is because we talk about it all the time. When these actors and these directors, and more particularly the actors, when they get asked about, are you a part of a product and that, they uh, they freeze up, they, they, they get all, you know, clammy in the hands or they spill the beans. But this is like perfect response to these just, just play with the fans you know you don't have to get yeah. all uh too nervous about it amanda your, your thoughts on mr Topher grace uh confirming that he's going to be in spider-man no way home i want to see it now <laughs> <laughs> i want to see it now because i love Topher grace i am someone who doesn't hate spider-man 3 i know a lot of people hate spider-man 3 but I'm on that bandwagon. I really, yes. I watched Spider-Man three a couple weeks ago, and uh, yeah, bad. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, it's not that bad. I don't know why we're trashing it. It's not that yeah. bad, but yeah, yeah, I would love to see Venom v Venom eventually. That'd be great. <laughs> Tom Hardy versus Topher Grace. Like, I think that is something we need to see. And also, he chose Ben Affleck out of all the other Batman. He's gonna love that one. Yeah, and I'm like, yes. he knows. So I was up. like, that's right. You love yeah. Batfleck, so yeah, I just. <laughs> This whole thing, I love him. You gotta love him. But yeah, Venom. I thought it was Venom. just so funny. I thought, it was, Chris, man, your thoughts on if actors should take this route when acts about if they're in a film or not, just having fun with them, playing around with them. Of course, sometimes they are in a film. You know, not everyone can freestyle like that. But uh, your thoughts on Topher Grace acts or answering if he's going to be in the next Spider-Man film? Yeah, that's a, that's an iconic troll. I, I'm all, that I'm is all yes, for it. and I'm also on the same camp. I don't hate Spider-Man three either. I don't hate X-Men three. I'm just a I'm just a loving guy of these movies. Um, <laughs> Apocalypse, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, whatever. Um, yeah, Topher Grace was probably one of the weaker parts. Well, Topher, Topher Grace as Venom was one of the weaker parts of that movie. Mm -hmm. But him as a character trying to like you know make his keep or like get you know get the shots and like earn his keep at the job and just he didn't have anything going for him. Never got the girls and all that. Yeah, that was like a good little part of the story. So it's not a bad question by the fan to ask why he if he's in it because it's like. He, he was a real part of the you know of the war in, yeah. in the three movies Very that kind of Very kicked true. this stuff off. So yeah, but yeah. To your to your question, yeah, I'm all about this kind of trolling. It's like not yeah. hard to like not be a fucking idiot and talk about your movie. <laughs> it's not out yet. I love it, man. I hope people take notes. Uh, Tom Holland, uh, my man, Andrew Garfield, he can't catch a win. We played the clip last week, Amanda, where he was on Jimmy Fallon, and he he just can't he can't catch a win. at this point. It's just like, dude, just. No, no, just say um, no, no response, you know. It, what's question. so what's so bad is that he, he has two time. not only that, he has two films yeah. ahead of No Way Home, so he's doing two separate press tours. Press tour. With the next one, TikTok boom, the uh, Linda, yes. the next one, yeah, there's gonna be a so bunch like, of them. The struggle is gonna be so real for him, but my god, he should just like zip it. There's no, there's no right answer anymore, yeah. And every and when it's so funny every time you see him now he gets more nervous he gets more like if you're not in the film Andrew you think he, at this point he'll just be like so relaxed but he's just like I, 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 if, if I'm in a, it was a review or some question I saw so someone funny. asked him last week if hypothetically they didn't even say if hypothetically if you were in Spider Man three they just said hypothetically if your Spider Man were to come back on big screen how would you react and just seeing him just like being full flustered and then he actually said if I was in Spider Man three which she didn't even ask him it's just again. Andrew, it's the biggest, the biggest kept secret in Hollywood. You're in the damn exactly, movie. but you know, I can't wait to see that film and see them on. Yeah, the we're happy. I'm happy to have you. Yeah, man, we 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 need those Spider Man, uh, Spider Man yeah. on the screen together. But listen, guys, Spider Man's come out in a couple months. We still got some more to talk about with our boy Thor, and it is uh, episode seven of What If, titled What If Thor Was the Only Child. Before we dive into it, just quickly, Amanda, uh, mm -hmm. episode. Was it five six. and six? Five and six, oh, we didn't have yeah, you on. Just six, quick, yeah, briefly, on. your thoughts on the zombie episode and your thoughts on Killmonger Wrecking Shop. <laughs> zombies were cool. I'm going to be yeah. really short with this. Zombies were cool. I did not like the Killmonger episode whatsoever. Okay. I just feel like the, the first couple of episodes of this season have been really strong. Mm -hmm. And now they're mm -hmm. slowly like declining, and that's the way I'm feeling about uh, the rest of the season. So I'm that's where I'm at right now. I'm not, yeah, I'm not that excited. But yeah, now, <laughs> what was it about the kill moment that didn't work for you? I'm just curious. If there's anything in particular, just the character itself. For some reason, I feel like it yeah. was out of character, and that's why I was just like, 
uh, I didn't vibe with it the whole time. I was like, this is this is off and I don't like it. And they yeah. kind of missed the mark on it. And it's like, it's Killmonger. He's such a great yeah. freaking character. Like, Icon, how do you, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's, I was kind of really disappointed with that one, but uh, gotcha. yeah. Interesting. Well, that, I mean, that brings us right into this week's episode. And I want to you know, write back at you, Amanda. Yeah. Thor, we got him uh, having a party, having a good old time. He's the only child. He is the only child in this universe. So before we yeah. you know, dive into the minutia of it all, just your quick thoughts on this episode following literally four weeks of Avengers dying left and right. We got <laughs> Doctor Strange, you know, having the saddest episode of all time. Mm -hmm. We got zombies. We got Killmonger killing folks. This was Disney saying, hey, by the way, we, we, we can have fun. We, we, we can make the kids happy. Your yeah. thoughts on this uh, the seventh episode? This was a palate cleanser. Yes. And it <laughs> felt like a filler episode at the same time. So, because um, again, you have like such strong characters in the other episodes. Like you just said, we really saw some great emotional moments. Mm -hmm. um, alternate timelines of all these characters, which are, you know, it's canon in the MCU yep. as we've discussed. So... Just to see like a frat boy <laughs> version of Thor in this one it was like, yay, we're gonna have fun, but also like you have strayed so far away from this character now that yeah. like this alternate version of him is something that I do not want to see ever again, to be perfectly honest. So <laughs> it was hard to sit through. There were some great moments. We're gonna dive into it afterwards, but yeah, as a whole, like this Thor just annoyed this shit out of me so <laughs> i'm sorry and i mean honestly man i'm kind of in the same boat with you i mean this is not to be too this wasn't too far-fetched from the mcu version of thor if i'm being honest as far as Just obviously our it. mcu he's not partying all the time he has more responsibilities he's been battle wounded he has low yeah. key but this one wasn't too far-fetched in regards to seeing how mcu has treated thor thus far but mm -hmm. chris man tossing it to you just your your thoughts coming off this did you uh have a good time did you party with thor in this episode man I would rather party with Thor in real life, but I yeah. don't want to watch this episode again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, this is my easily my least favorite, and I hated, I hated the Killmonger episode. I think we we talked about that. Yeah, this, this is, and I hate. It was my least favorite, but I guess I was like, oh, this is fine. This is like mm -hmm. not fine. Um, there's a couple good lines. The phone line was cool from my man Goldblum. Um, it was cool to see the some some of the other characters come back. It was interesting to see low-key as a frost giant for real mm -hmm. but then if, cool. if i'm doing a what if then i would just do like what if they were just switched like what if thor was raised by the frost giants and loki was raised by odin Ooh. and then just see, see where that goes i like, like that it yeah. doesn't mean that this dude would turn into some fucking like ferris bueller running right. all over the world like fixing the messes um captain marvel was so random um it, it's so random like make me i like her <laughs> Like I want people to like her. Don't yeah. do this. And then at the end, you, know, you get the you get the fire <laughs> ending. So then people would be like, "Damn, that episode was whack. This ending so fire." So it's like, yeah, don't try to trick me. Like <laughs> it was a lot of trickery. I, I'm funny you meant trickery with with Loki. I like your pitch on that idea of like having Loki be Thor essentially. Uh, which funny enough, Tom Hiddleston. Um, audition to play Thor so that would have been kind of cool mm -hmm. to kind of see him voice a more nice. serious version of Thor and having Thor be kind of the low-key of the situation that would have been really cool uh I like that idea a lot next season Chris hit him up man you know what if <laughs> switch it up a little bit um that <laughs> was actually to be honest with you just to kind of remix this episode I would have preferred if they would have made Thor to be more serious and it would have been a character that was, uh, you know, maybe not uh, involved in the films that could have brought out the goofier side of them if they wanted to go the whole party route. Um, but, you know, like I said, I thought this episode was like pretty much almost, um, you know, similar to what we see in the MCU in regards to how the Thor can be. You know what? Is Thor stupid, Amanda? Is Thor stupid in the MCU? <laughs> like, is he a stupid character? Does he? I know he has some intellect. Like, he's a battle. Yeah, he's on the battlefield. But is he a stupid like, character? They made him that way. Like yeah. personally, I think they made him that way, and I like that's what I've noticed. Like as I've said before, it, like progressively, yeah. he's gotten like dumber. <laughs> dumber. <laughs> and like I know, like I'm I'm a blonde. I'm speaking on behalf of blondes, but like Jesus Christ, like no offense. I'm just saying it's a stereotype, anyways. But I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. like it's just he was, and yeah, I don't know. He was smart in the first Thor, and now he's yeah. dumb. He is dumb because he's the punchline of the jokes. That's what it is. Like once you yeah. do that, 
and you give him all the punchlines and him being a punchline himself, it's like, okay, well, yeah. what's the point of yeah. giving him any other lines or pieces of dialogue? Same question for you, Chris. Do you feel like at this point, whether it's in this episode or, or, or Chris Hemsworth's version of Thor, is, and, and someone mentioned he's not a stupid, not a stupid character. We're saying like, intellectually speaking, is he a, a, a dumb individual in a certain extent? It's not that he's dumb, but he's just like, he's a soldier. And like, yeah, soldiers are not, in history known to be geniuses like this guy really is on the team of geniuses you got banner you got Stark. Yeah. like like chris evans uh, well captain america is not a genius like this is like a regular kid from the hood like he's just a kid like yeah and you know Sp spider-man's a genius because this kid's like a real nerd you know what i mean like mm -hmm. so he's like he's dumber in comparison to these geniuses number one but number two like yeah he's he's a little dumb he's just a soldier he's just he's, he's like a fighter like that's what he is like he's, he's yeah he's like smart at the art of war like he's sun Tzu. like mm -hmm. he's not he doesn't have. He's not supposed to have this intellect. Yeah. Um, but the episodes like this, of course, they're like, okay, you, like you are like this is dumb. But this is a cartoon. This is not. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. not part of the MCU. So like, yeah. you know. It's it's a weird thing because I, I I can see how Marvel would like to play with just like not taking this, the character as serious as like in the comics there's a lot of runs where he's like super serious stone faced no jokes very um, you know kind of about his business but obviously MC you want to remix it um, but I don't know it's like I said I felt, especially in this episode I feel like he was just very like they even say in this episode he's a jock he's a you know a, 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 a part of a fraternity type of situation but yeah. going more in depth of the episode <laughs> as we open up uh, and a whole premise of this episode which by the way too you guys probably noticed it that the, the watcher is getting closer getting closer and closer uh mm -hmm. to the earth and and i think him getting close to the earth uh will maybe play into you know dr strange and the multiverse being more affected with him interfering which he should not be doing but neither here nor there the whole premise of this episode is odin found uh loki but decides to to give him back to the frost giants as we open up and, and open with the scene very similar to thor with jane no selvik he's not in this story he's off doing something else solving other uh mysteries of science uh but we see that her and darcy are trying to warn people that there's an alien invasion coming and we need to figure something out. They're, they're putting her on hold. They're doing like, uh, they're doing her like they did Scarlett Johansson. Whenever she was calling Disney, they kind of put it on the, on the hold dial and not picking up her calls. So we, we see from that, uh, low key or as to say Thor does make his way to earth and is ready to get his party on and party central which is uh, in Las Vegas. So, Amanda, your thoughts on kind of opening up this episode with, again, the Watcher getting closer to Earth, Jane trying to warn S.H.I.E.L.D. and them not taking her calls, and inevitably Mr. Thor Odinson makes his way to Las Vegas. Um, I like the opening. Uh, yeah, that was the one thing where I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. And like, I really love the difference in animation, too, when they were retelling... Um, yeah. You know, Loki going to uh, Jotunheim, like completely different. Odin giving him up. Like, I love the difference in explaining their their journey. So I really love they changed that up um, just to show a flashback. It felt like a storybook, which I which I, I loved. Um, yeah. I like that the Watchers are getting closer. I think that this finale, I know this is going to be like straight up prediction right now, but I think that something's going to happen where it's going to deal with the multiverse. <laughs> And like, that's You're also right. going to cause something because right. if he's getting closer, what's going to happen mm -hmm. in the finale? Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. Love Jane, obviously Darcy. I love their dynamic. I would love, you know, to see more of them. So this is a nice slice of that. And yeah. I love that they went to Vegas. It's party central. <laughs> I'm also an only child. So like, if I were Dang, an only child, yeah. I'd do what Thor did and go to Vegas. Why not? So, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Chris, man, it's awesome to you on your thoughts on how the show opens with, again, the Watcher getting close to Earth, uh, getting closer to intervening with Earthly Matters, as well as getting this kind of remix of the story of uh, of Loki being with his, with his people, uh, and as well as uh, Thor making it to, um, you know, Earth, Midgard, and going to Vegas. Yeah, I liked the beginning. I really loved Amanda's point about the art. I thought the same exact thing. I was like, damn, this should make the art looks fire. Art already looks fire, but I was like, damn, they even made it more fire. Yeah. So I was, I was, I, I'm a big um, Darcy fan. So every time I see her, and I'm, cause yeah, this episode yeah. wasn't like prime Darcy, right? But it was still like, okay, let's try this. And like, I yeah. respect the attempt. Like, okay, marry this duck. Cool, got it. Mm -hmm. Um. Then I was like, oh, he's, he's like at Vegas partying, and I was like, why? Why would he do that? Why would he want? To, why? Why would he go there? I, I I was like, that's when I'm like, oh man, this is what's happening. I knew the episode was like 
called party throw or about party throw, yeah. but I was like, I didn't think yeah. it was going to be like this. Yeah, and I do want to go to the party, but I, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing out. <laughs> yeah. As right. as I mentioned, this was uh, Disney's version of the Hangover. This was uh, oh, Party yeah, Central for sure, uh, <laughs> and, and even the shots of them being in the the hotel, the hotel. room and Rocket yeah. being in there. Yeah. Uh, they Which definitely I wish had... that they would just in, insinuate that they hooked up, like they, like they got Dorothy sleep on the couch. Yeah, come on, man, give me some, give me some juice. <laughs> Jane A. She she's uh you know she's a lady she's a lady. Uh, exactly. But we 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 move on and seeing again this is very uh, as I think Chris mentioned uh, Ferris Bueller kind of whenever you say don't party that AKA means go ahead and have a party uh, as his yeah. mom is going off which I thought that was actually kind of funny the the com comedic beast was okay to me but this was funny when yeah. she has says you know when Odin's going to sleep for a thousand years all right I'm going to my, my sister's house uh, I thought that kind of whole bit was kind of funny there but again she gives Thor's the the task of studying which you know we we know thor wasn't gonna do that especially uh with him knowing that he can go off and do his own thing we see that himdell is, is given the task of keeping an eye on him but you know he doesn't do the good the best job of doing so because he says that Ms. Ms. um Midgard isn't a place that Himdale keeps an eye on with, but we get, this is where the, where the fun takes place. We get, uh, you know, we see Thor telling his folks, we got to go to earth. Let's have a good time. Let's celebrate and, and invite some people. And this is where we get all of our major cameos, um, from, we get, uh, Howard the duck. We got the grandmaster DJ one, two grandmaster on the one twos. We got Nebula in the mix. We got scrolls, uh, all in, in the mix. I'm just curious, Amanda, did you did you want to see anyone else kind of make a cameo? Were you okay with the cameos that we got here? Was anyone that you missed that wished uh, they would have made a cameo in this moment? Honestly, no. I think yeah. they got the right ones. Yeah. Uh, for what it is, I mean, like <laughs> I love the Grandmaster right there. Um, but yeah, you can't over like stuff the episode with cameos. Yeah. So I think they kind of nailed it with what they had. And then as we can see here, Aww. the magic and science uh, so between cute. Jane and I don't know the, the, their chemistry was uh, was working for me in this more so than doing the movies. Oddly enough, yeah. uh, Chris, man, I'm curious. Howard the Duck, are, are we getting a Howard the Duck spinoff on Disney Plus? Man, this is not only the second episode that we've seen him, man. We've seen him in the MCU quite a few times. Would you be down for a Howard the Duck slash Darcy spinoff? Throw her in the mix because they're they're now married. If you throw Darcy, then yeah, yeah. you had me, but I'm yeah. not watching Howard the Duck on Disney Plus. A WandaVision not. type of situation, Howard and Get Darcy. Get out of here. Kids, come Get on, man. Out of here. Their own theme song. Come <laughs> on. Come Chris. on. That's fire, come Chris. On. You know it is. Darcy Duck. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, Darcy Duck. That's a, now her official. That's canon, exactly. ladies and gentlemen. She is now married to Howard the Duck. But as we kind of move on with the episode and get all the funniness and the cameos, we we start to pick up the story a little bit more. As I mentioned, uh, Jane, uh, hangover style, uh, you know, looking for Doug, can't find Doug, can't find her phone. As we, we see, she gets a wake up call by S.H.I.E.L.D. And we see that Maria Hill is playing the acting uh, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. because my boy uh, Nick Fury couldn't see Korg a mile away and he gets uh, knocked out conscious <laughs> by Korg, which was uh, kind of funny within itself. But kind of moving on with the episode, we, we get Maria Hill and she makes the call. Amanda, Captain Marvel's usage so far, her coming to the mix, were you a fan of her? And we'll talk about her fight sequence, but were you a fan of that character being the one that they call to get Thor off this party strip? Um. Yeah, I was okay with it to be honest, because I liked what um, I liked what they had in uh, Infinity War. No, yeah. beginning of end. What? Yes, end game, one of yeah, with the whole end game. Uh, I like her. So, yeah, I get, I get confused because like they just yeah mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> but yeah, with Endgame, like I think that they had it makes sense their power set kind of matches, so it right. makes right. sense why like she would be called in. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mind it. I thought it was pretty cool. Why not? Let's shake it up a bit. And uh, yeah, calling her was cool. And um, yeah, I was okay with it. <laughs> Chris, I know you mentioned earlier Captain Marvel, kind of just throwing her in the mix. What is your thoughts on uh, giving her the the pager? Which was actually funny when Dar again Darcy was hitting it on 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 notes. I can't remember the exact joke joke that she mentioned, but it was pretty funny. Oh, my dad has one of those. But yeah. your thoughts on uh, calling uh, Captain Marvel when you whenever you got a problem? <laughs> Call it, it, felt, it felt like they were like in, in the in the writing room and they were like all right so we pretty much got every character taken care of and what if and they're like fuck what about captain marvel and they're like oh god throw it party <laughs> thor and so it felt random and then like when she was yeah. there 
it, of course, it wasn't the actual voice, right? That wasn't her. That wasn't Brie. No, that was, uh, I can't yeah. remember the actor's name, but uh, a lot of the actors came back, but yes, yeah, that wasn't Brie yeah. Larson. Yeah. Who was separate? No, who was Seth Green? Is he the duck? Yes, he plays Howard the Duck. Yeah, he he voiced them in the Guardians films, and uh, yeah, Seth Green. Yeah. It's so oh, random. <laughs> it's, it really is. I think it was like he's friends with James Gunn, so I think that's like a guy he got in the first Guardians film. Well, because they did Scooby Doo. That's right. That's right. His first uh, uh, kind of big yeah. movie that was that he wrote. That is very true. Scooby Doo. Exactly. God. Yes. I love so, that yeah. movie. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I thought it was a little random. I, I like Captain Marvel more than most people like, as a character. I was like, damn, yeah. I wish she was. I wish people liked her more and they did her, did more with her. But because this episode was so whack to me, I was like, can't get any worse. So I'm like, that's fine. You could just be here flying around and shooting lasers. The fight scenes are pretty cool, though. It was interesting to see like what, what their fights would be like. So I was like, this is not whack. It just seems random. Yeah, and we're going to get to that fight scene. So I think that was pretty cool to see them go toe to toe. But before we do so, uh, discuss Harley with the twenty dollars super chat. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, this, Harley says, "I've missed you guys. We've 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 missed a man, and we're glad to, the the ace is back tonight. Uh, college is already kicking my butt uh, yeah. after zombie episode has been going down, which Amanda alluded to that as well. I, I don't think so because I actually really That's enjoyed the Killmonger one. I had a good time with it, but I can see how it's, it is kind of somewhat declining for some people. But Harley, yeah. keep your head up college i know can be yeah. a, a a pain in the ass uh <laughs> with books and, and probably going back to school for the first time in over almost two years so yeah. shout out to you keep crushing it do your thing i uh, appreciate the love and uh hopefully after next week we can get back in that high momentum of where the show is going but do mm -hmm. you feel the same uh i know amanda you mentioned it's kind of been a decline for you personally yeah kind of yeah i just i'm not excited for it anymore like i'll yeah. like i'll get to it i'll be like yeah okay i know it's out like i'll yeah, get yeah. to it type of thing it's not like i'll wake up early at seven o'clock in the morning with a cup of coffee right. and be like i'm watching this so that's where i'm at same with you chris you think the, sh the episodes have kind of declined a, a little bit slightly from the the first half well remind me where we at was la what was was last week vision or no was that two weeks killmonger ago? it was killmonger and then it was the zombies and then the, mm. the dead avengers and uh um, right so then it's yeah. like I didn't really like Killmonger. I don't like this one. So like the last two, but After I like that, the zombies. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like, I guess maybe we'll see. I mean, I don't want to get, it's two more. So I have to see. Yeah. Which I um, think next week, um, this is Gamora being Thanos, I think is the next one before we get a uh, ultimate uh, uh, infinity stone ultra, which we'll get to that, which I thought that. Do we get real Zoe or do we not know yet? I think she's coming back. I think, yeah, I think Zoe will be uh, voicing the character Gamora. Uh, who's Gamora? Who's Gamora? Why <laughs> is yeah, Gamora? Sure, uh, yeah, why is Gamora? I think we'll be getting her back next week, which would be pretty cool. But uh, kind of going, and, and again, some people mentioned uh, Captain Marvel still playing weak. I'm tired of that. I'm hoping that Nia DaCosta is going to put a nice little spin on Captain Marvel. Because like Chris mentioned, there is some kind of mm -hmm. some people are not the biggest fans of uh for you know reasons that uh, you know outside of the movies but I, I i'm really excited to see what they do with captain marvel um two or the marvel marvels coming next next year is the next year or two years from now can't even remember the release date i think of that it's one. two years two years yeah with uh getting tiana paris and miss marvel and now i think they're trying to build her up and, and get people excited about her again because her film didn't make a billion dollars which still forget that all the time what's up chris yeah I want to be on this platform with you and be a fair human being. Let's hear. Because I, I, I've been, you know, I hate Falcon. I always hate on Anthony, mm -hmm. and I've been hated on 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 Paris since all of Wanda. But she's very good in Candyman, so I don't hate mm -hmm. the girl. She's good. She's a great actress. Very she's good in Candyman. Candyman. Mm -hmm. Just I just want people to know, like, I'm not a full hater. Like when they go hard, and and I was like, I show love. She has it in her. Yeah. I was just like, just want to be clear. It's not her person. <laughs> very good in Candyman. She was, and you know who directed her was Nia DaCosta, who will yeah, be directing yeah, yeah, her yeah, again yeah. in oh uh, Captain Marvel. So I think we'll get some synergy from that film, hopefully. Uh, and I'm really excited to uh, wish, by the way, November 12th, we're getting the Disney Plus behind the scenes stuff that they're going to be announcing some new right. shows, maybe some movies potentially, uh, which Shang-Chi will be playing on Disney Plus on uh, November 12th as well. So maybe for money. Marvel, they, 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 they just. <laughs> 
Can't stop, won't stop. Uh, but one of the funnier bits that did work for me was Loki being in his uh, frost giant form, uh, brother from another mother, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. But as you guys can see in the top left corner, uh, Captain Marvel's here to, 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 to stop this nonsense. And I think this was a pretty cool sequence. I don't know if we'll ever see them come toe to toe or go battle for battle, blow for blow mm -hmm. in the live action MCU. But if, if we did, based on this episode, that would be probably one of the more cooler uh, scenes that we can imagine. Because Amanda alluded to it, they do have a similar power set uh regarding mm -hmm. just being like ultimate beast yeah. when they uh when they really hone into their powers but seeing her coming to mix amanda uh this fight here were you a fan of thor versus uh carol round one <laughs> what'd you think about that fight um i i really enjoyed it i did i really enjoyed it um because of their power sets i think uh yeah. it was the coolest part of the episode to be perfectly honest i was Agreed. kind of like coasting through it and waiting for something cool to happen and this was mm -hmm. it so um like you said i don't think we'll ever you know we're never gonna see them go toe-to-toe -to -toe live action i like i don't i don't think so so yeah. but this is the way to do it. So what if, yeah, you know, what, what if exactly, Captain what Marvel exactly. battled, <laughs> battled Thor? So yeah, exactly. I thought it was sick. They're so cool together. So seeing, again, full power. That's what I love about this stuff is like you get to see them just go all out. And we're not used to seeing that because they always hold, especially Captain Marvel back and it's annoying as hell. She comes in for five minutes and then adios. Like it, mm -hmm. she never stays longer than five minutes anywhere. So <laughs> it's getting, an, yeah, she's always busy. I'm like, what are you doing? But anyways, yeah, yeah this was cool. I really enjoyed I it. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Visually it was cool. Uh, Chris, yeah. man, your take on, on uh, Thor versus Captain Marvel and this, uh, blow for blow tit for tat battle that we get on earth that goes from different continents to different parts of the world what's your take on this fight man yeah i thought it was cool it gave me like little flashbacks of ragnarok talk and talk talk oh Gore there you go hulk. hashtag <laughs> yeah gruel <laughs> Gore and hulk fighting and I was like, okay like this is obviously animation so it's like better than than they can do in live action but it, mm -hmm. i thought it was cool and you know to Meta's point it is very similar and i love when he drops the hammer on people it's like, so funny like, i don't know why i'm, he I'm always like all the time yeah, it's like what uh, Rhodey said in, uh, was it Iron Man 2? He's like, why don't you just leave with that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it will be a cheat code. Uh, but I, literally, he should do that every Infinity War. Um, you know, he should did that. Endgame should did that. But no, you know, like I said, it's, it's a cheat code. But going back to uh, active uh, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Maria Hill's like, you know what? Let's go ahead and nuke. Let's kaboom Thor and uh, set up a plan to get him off the planet. Meanwhile, we got, again, going back to the hangover, we got these people all around Earth. Serta is is hidden on uh, the Liberty Bell. Uh, we got uh, Loki and his boys, you know, putting Frost uh, helmets on the founding fathers and all that, and the presidents and what have you. Which was just they're just they're just running amok at this point. So Darcy comes through in the clutch, suggests that you you know get the mom involved, which they call Hemdale. You know, brings her. She has to cut her her trip short. Thor is talking to the to the rest of people. Help me out, man. We we got to get this situated. We got to fix all this up. Uh, Amanda, your take on this kind of um, very classic uh, '80s '90s parents coming home, fix up the situation before they get home. W were you a fan of that kind of uh, sequences that we got there? It was cute, you know. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> I always love seeing more Frigga. I love her so much, and so like great. that's yeah. why it was. You know, it, it was tough in Thor 2 to kind of see her die and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I thought it was cute. It was cute stuff. Again, the comedic beats, they were, they were OK, yeah, uh, but it was yeah. fun to see for the most part. Chris, man, you get more Darcy. She's coming in. She's coming up. She's a genius, as Jane says, man, with coming up with this idea. But your take on this uh, getting everything back in order before mama comes home and gets that belt. First of all, the scene right here, I was very disrespected by messing up the Lady Liberty's arm. I was like, this is so, like, I hate this guy. Disrespect, disrespect. Yeah, exactly. Sir. That was a gift. You don't ruin a gift. That was a gift. Um, <laughs> so let's see how I feel about this. Yeah, cleaning up, I was like, okay, I see what's happening here. I understand it's what's true. happening here. You have to give them, I, have, I guess I have to give them a little credit because they're like, let's just try this. Like, maybe people will like this, maybe whatever. So, like, yeah. I respect that. In real life, it's nonsense because if it's Thor, if you don't care, like who cares if your mom's like, anyway, my point <laughs> is, I get it. I get what was done. Yeah. It's just weird to see. But it's a cartoon. Like it's I said, that's why I, wanted, that's, that's why I wanted the show to just live in its own world. Mm -hmm. Now we have to see what implications it really has. But I'm like, if it lives here in this little special little world, 
and we could just be fine. But yeah, you know. no, I agree. I agree, man. And and as we kind of wrap, I think this this was probably the most. This almost reminded me so much of Thor Ragnarok, where you know we get all the fun. Loki and Thor, they're brothers. They're happy. They're on the ship. Asgard's a people, and then you know we get. Thanos' ship come around them, and we know that the Dark and Doom is on right around the corner, which we get the big reveal, which I think this character, as Amanda talked about earlier, uh, Ultron, Vision, Combination, will be the big bad. It's going to bring all the different uh, multiverse Avengers, Captain Carter, uh, uh, Star-Lord, or uh, Wakanda Star-Lord. Um, we're going to get, obviously, the, the remaining Avengers that maybe survived the uh, zombie apocalypse, Killmonger, I think this in Doctor Strange, of course, Though that character is going to bring all these uh, these characters because he has Infinity Stones, uh, and we know again uh, from the Watcher getting closer and closer that that's going to be something that's going to mess things up. So, Amanda, your your take on any thoughts and theories and predictions on what we can maybe expect to see from this Ultron, which I really hope it's a lot better than the Ultron we got in, in the film because I thought they wasted that character. But that's just my thoughts on Ultron. I didn't think he was that great. But your thoughts on this uh, Vision Infinity mm -hmm. uh, Gauntlet wearing? Ultron. Well, you're hundred percent right that they screwed up Ultron and Age of Ultron. So I'm with you there. You're oh, not right. alone. Um, we have a big baddie and it's like the ending of the season. So, you know, naturally so like we, everything's going to come together within the last two episodes um, unless they kind of just leave him here and then bring him in the last episode and then they go somewhere else in the second last. So I, I don't know what's uh, going to happen there. But um, I think the setup was strong because you're like putting all these characters in place. And then obviously the last half of the season, you're going to figure out how to bring them together. And the watcher is going to come into the mix as well. So I thought it was cool. I thought it was a really like good ending. It's a strong ending to this episode going into mm -hmm. the final two. Yeah, final two of the season. Mm -hmm. So. Chris, man, same with you, man. I know you're a Vision fan. We got Vision. We got Ultron. We got Infinity Stones. And uh, yep. he's here to wreck shop, man. We should take on uh, this version. And, and should our heroes be frightened of this Ultron-Vision co collab? Yeah, I'm also an Ultron fan, too. I mean, of course, Vision over Ultron. But um, oh, yeah. I think Ultron, Age of Ultron is like in the in the in what the people think is bottom tier MCU. It's mm -hmm. like, I like I like it, actually. Um but quick question it, it, where does it rank for you in avengers films in avengers films obviously avengers, yeah. on the bottom bro like duh <laughs> but on the on the scale just checking, of like just oh, you, did you say number one i understand you say number one chris <laughs> age of all times number one you don't think that though right no, no no i'm joking yeah i'm joking <laughs> okay. okay cool 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 yeah 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 but but super underrated all times <laughs> He's also a poet, Is it too. underrated? Yeah, it's under because people hate it. Um, unless it's whack. And uh, gratefully cause, so, because it's, uh, it's it's not, it's, it's not that it's great. Not, it's, it's, not it's, a, it's a good man. setup movie. It's a good setup movie. It, it, it's a lot of setup, which overshadowed more. the narrative to me. Mm. It's because they not, were, it, I just feel like they were all thrown together, and it's Tony's mm -hmm. fault, and it's like, ugh. Oh, yeah. It's always Tony's fault. That's why yeah, I can't stand. Always Tony. That should be a, a mantra of the MCU. It's always no, Tony's there was fault. No Ultron, Cap picking up the hammer in Endgame wouldn't have been as iconic. Wouldn't have, would it? Look at that setup. That house party. Okay, okay, okay. That was probably that is my favorite Ooh. scene, by the way, of them uh, just bantering around, just seeing them. You two know, seconds of a tour. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a watch party. We will do a watch along for Ultron. Uh, of, of uh, Ultron. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and those accents. Which one? Wanda, Wanda and no, <laughs> yeah, that started. That started before. Wait, no, actually, yeah, that was their intro. Right? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, sorry about that. There are no strings on me. Um, See, that was yeah. cool. That was the coolest. I'm like, they're gonna make him amazing, and then <sighs> anyway, and Claw, Claw was good in that movie too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I forgot he was in. Clint, as someone brings up, they set up Clint's family, which kind of came out of left field. Come on, yo, mm. come on, language. It, language I hated guy. that. I couldn't. They reduced him to a 90 year old grandpa. And <laughs> what grandpa. is he? It, he is that. No, he's not. He is a super soldier. He is not a grandpa at all. It seems to I run on some form of electricity. <laughs> no, no, no. It was bad. <laughs> the writing in Avengers and AOU so bad for Steve Rogers and there Natasha. Moments, Let's yeah. go there. Come on, Chris. I'm right. He can't be a grandpa. AOU. 
he he older. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. So yeah, besides that, this, this ending is cool. I just feel yeah. like someone said in the chat earlier, like this episode could have been an early episode. I feel like this ending could have been yeah. snapped, on to, snapped on. Just you know, nah. on to, to a different episode. But yeah. I'm like, like this whole episode, I'm like, this is a waste. This is a waste. This is a waste. And then it's like, okay, this is super important, most important scene of the whole series. Now you just add it to this. So yeah, we'll see. I agree. The placement, um, I think initially they wanted this to come out earlier. I don't know what, what made them switch it up. Um, but this would have, to me, this would have been a good placement probably right after the T'Challa episode, which I think was the second episode. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah. they put this here just because, it, as, as you guys mentioned earlier, it's been so bleak. Uh, the Avengers dying, zombies, uh, you know, freaking Strange. Doctor Strange destroying the universe. So I think they was like, we, we, we got to lighten the mood. <laughs> we got to, where's Thor? Where's Captain Marvel? Let's throw him in there. Yeah. But yeah, I think it would have probably placed better if it was a little bit earlier in the season. But um, also, fair. too, so, hey, this 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 has to be it. We we got to have a, a, an Ultron conversation maybe uh, at a future date because I will. I just totally forgot it did have a pretty cool scene with the uh, Hulk versus the Hulk Buster uh, with Iron Man. That was a pretty oh, cool yeah. scene. But yeah, like Amanda said, it's a two hour film and it's just like a handful of scenes that uh, that work. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it sounds, we're, like, sounds a lot like Thor: The Dark World to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah. like Ragnarok. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm kidding. There was I'm so joking, much setup. There was so much setup in that film. And Josh Whedon, yeah, I know he uh, he didn't have the best time on that film, but you know, mm -hmm. Josh Whedon's not the best guy, so maybe he deserved that uh, terrible time on the set. But overall, I think you guys, uh, starting with you, Amanda, just kind of mm -hmm. again general overall thoughts in this episode. Um, I think it is more of the weaker ones because implications wise, it wasn't like an event episode. Uh, yeah. It wasn't any, you know, darker moments. It was just kind of like there almost, but your, yeah. your thoughts on this episode. Well, they sold it like it's time to party with the frat bro. <laughs> and it's like, that's exactly. pretty much what it was. So yeah, definite palate cleanser. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't think I'll revisit this particular one, yeah, but, I don't think I um, or even like, there's some episodes that I won't, but um, yeah, it was okay. It was a fun episode. It's there, like you said, and yeah. uh, it's the way they, they marketed it. They're like, we're going to party, and they exactly. did. So, and, and there's no, like, again, even every episode, there's like some, like, you can see them maybe crossing one of these uh, setups to the live action. I don't think there's anything in this episode that has any live action implications whatsoever in regards no. to characters or characterizations or anything. So, uh, Chris, yeah. man, this is your final take on this episode. I know, again, this was one of your lower tiers. Um, but as far as like overall, is it something you're going to revisit at all? Is it just kind of, again, just a throwaway episode, more or less? No, it's definitely a throwaway episode. Would have would have worked earlier in the season, and then yeah. too, like the closer we get to October, then it's like, doesn't a zombie episode fit better over there? Like, like this? totally agree. Exactly. Yep. You know. Yep. I, we can't really, you know, we've I've been trying to rank them in my head, but I guess at the end we should do like a full like on our night yeah, we'll, yeah. review. We'll do like a full ranking so you can see like how things fit. But yeah, yeah, I, I respect their idea of like okay. You move Loki, and then you see what would happen. I just don't think he would turn into this dude that just wants to turn up in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> but that's just me. So it is a little throwy episode, but yeah, it doesn't ruin the season. If, if there's been seven episodes and only one of them we've all reacted the same way, there's not been none, no, no other episode where we all felt the same way. Right, so right, right. That's that's pretty good percentages. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And, and, and again, it'll be really fascinating to see again when, if we do, which I do think we're going to see a lot of the characters that we've seen so far come together and teaming up and seeing mm -hmm. Party Thor interact. Maybe that was a thing because I'm, I'm a very just like I feel about Tony Stark. Sometimes I feel like some Avengers play better with other like play off of Avengers better when like versus their solo stuff. Uh, yeah. So seeing yeah. this Party Thor interact with Captain Carter, uh, T'Challa, Killmonger, uh, Doctor Strange, it might be a little bit of a, of, a, of a different dynamic. It might be something that we didn't expect uh, based on this, this solo episode. So maybe next time we see Thor, he's a little bit more serious. Uh, or maybe he's gained 100 pounds and we'll get fat Thor next time we see him, which I know would be... <laughs> <laughs> a favorite of you guys is but mm -hmm. that's it man i think uh yeah like i said next week we're getting into the gamora stuff uh i think what if gamora was went down the path of that thanos potentially um which would be very very interesting um i couldn't even imagine what they would do with that with nebula and i think it's easy to, to picture because like you see like you know when he's trying to turn her head when he finds her mm -hmm. you're like mm -hmm. what what if she just follows his lead and follows like, just that path yeah like just does it yeah. i think that i think it'll be a good episode which I mean, she does, if I'm not mistaken, in um, 
in in game and you kind of get that from guardians that she went down the path just to put a front on just to be like she was the baddest villain or uh assassin in the, in the galaxy so to your point chris to see her go deeper down that path and and not fake it and be serious like she wants to do what Thanos wants to, which is, you know, snap uh, the world away. But yeah, it'll be really great to see. Amanda, your thoughts on Nebula, or not Nebula, but Gamora next week and anything uh, that you would like to see be into the mix? Any Guardians? Are we going to get any Guardians, you think? Poss I don't know. Possibly. Maybe like Rocket will come out of nowhere. But I think yeah. that, because uh, I think it wouldn't make sense if like Peter <laughs> came in. I don't know. Here we go. We got to get this cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Wi-Fi. Oh, <laughs> That'd be really cool, actually. Yeah. But uh, I love Gamora. I think that mm -hmm, there's so mm -hmm. much more potential for her, and uh, I hate that she died. And yeah. uh, she's back, though. She's back. She, is she though? Like, what kind of version of Gamora do we have coming back? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah, I just I, I want to see more of her, and this sounds like an exciting storyline. So I am excited. Yeah. I couldn't agree with yeah. you more, and I can't wait to see what they have up the sleeve. And I expect, like I said, next week, news-wise, we're going to probably get some trailers that we can probably talk about next week and um, maybe some other movie news uh, with the MCU. But overall, guys, this has been our seventh live stream with Amanda back in the building, uh, you know, getting the game back together. It was such a fun time, and her sharing her thoughts on Tiff and Chris talking about sex education. This was a fun episode, guys, and I really appreciate mm -hmm. you guys uh, joining the conversation and tuning in tonight. But before we wrap up, Amanda, any uh, um, any things you're excited about for the rest of the week? Any any movies or shows or things you got on the docket that you're excited to check out? Um, I plan on finishing Sex Education, hopefully, mm -hmm. <laughs> eventually. Um, the Guilty also comes out with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, yeah. on Friday. Oh, I did watch that one at TIFF, and it was. It comes out on good. Friday. I think I, I saw it. Is it? Is it next week? I think, I, I think it's Did next I? week, Friday. Oh, okay. I was like, God damn it. I, I told you. Like that. <laughs> yeah. No, because like this um, week, yeah. I, I'm getting confused with everything. But yeah, uh, that, one's yeah. that one's good. Yeah. That one's good. And mm. uh, this week, for sure, Midnight Mass. So mm. I, w I did yeah. watch it. And I was like, <sighs> like yes, he yes. went there. That's all I got to yeah. say. So he went. Yeah. There. I love Mike Flanagan. And I'm going to start my 31 Days of Horror. Uh, so I'm excited for that, too. Awesome, awesome, Chris, man. What about you, my friend? Any any Netflix shows? Any movies that you? Uh, which, by the way, I forgot the Squid Game. I know a lot of people have been talking about that. I heard it's pretty, yes. pretty gory and pretty awesome. I, I gotta check that. that out. But anything on the docket this week for you, my friend? Yeah, what's up for me on Netflix? Let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, I maybe go back and finish the rest of Dear White People. The new season four just released watch that today, too. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Apparently, season four is a musical, so fire beware. Um, next week, of course, Venom. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Britney Spears has a documentary next week, which I'll check out. I, don't I need one of you guys to explain to me what what's going on with Britney Spears. I have, I'm like completely out of the clue on what is free Britney, the whole Britney Spears or Britney versus Spears. I don't even know what's going on. So you guys yeah. gonna have to catch me up on that. I'm I'm like old man, I give you the deep dive next week. Yeah. 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 Week. Okay. 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 <laughs> but I also don't think it's something we should be caring about. Um, <laughs> But you know, we'll see. She's yeah. one of Amanda my got icons. Yeah. She's yeah. one of my icons, so it's like it's, it's all good. <laughs> um, it's sad to see when people do so well, and then people just want to see them crash. So you want to yeah. see them. We have to uplift them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. We just we take from them. We don't give them anything back. Anyway, um, besides that, what else? Now you got me interested in Lamb. I have to. I have to check that out. Oh <laughs> shoot! True. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm yeah, I'm all over the place. So but it does seem like a quiet little week. It seems like a quiet week this weekend, it feels like. Yeah. And then next week is, yeah, definitely next week is wrap it exactly. up with, the, like you said, October Venom and all this stuff. It's going to be a, Dude, October's it's gonna a be, disaster. It's going to be fun, but like Amanda said, it's going to be so chaotic. <laughs> Uh, Venom, Halloween, James Bond, TV shows here, Secession's coming. Dude. It's going to be a banana yeah. spot, dude. But I'm I'm so excited for it. But yeah. uh, with all that being said, Amanda, kicking it to you first mm -hmm. as far as outros. Where can the people find you? Where can we find those TIFF reviews and all that fun stuff? Let them know. Yeah, well, this was so much fun. I'm so happy I'm back with you, Gems. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. Uh, this is awesome. And uh, I did miss it. I did. So you guys can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. You can check out my TIFF coverage, 25 films over at candidxcinema.com. 
Um, as I said, my Dune reviews there last night in Soho is there. Um, and I have a couple other ones dropping. Uh, even I interviewed the director for night books, which I also just watched. And that interview is on geekbum.net. So you can check that out. He's a lot of fun. He directed Brightburn as well. So, uh, it was, it was an honor to interview him, but yeah, I have a whole bunch of stuff happening. It's crazy. I'm going to try to watch some horror movies because it's the first day of fall and that's what I do. So you guys can find me there in Canon Cinema on YouTube. Do it, guys. Do it. And I'm, I'm excited because I is that night book, is it, um, I've heard it's pretty good. Kind of kid-friendly-ish, right? Yeah. It's a family-friendly, yeah. like scary movie. And mm -hmm. I, I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. I felt like yeah. a kid again watching it. So like it was awesome. Yeah, check that out. And, and um. Jessica Jones, uh, uh, Kristen Ritter. Ritter. Kristen Ritter, yeah, she's she's yeah. a like a she a villain or she's person? the witch. She's the witch. It, okay, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Cool. She's cool. Awesome. <laughs> well, guys, links in the bio for Amanda. Definitely do yourself a favor and check out those tip reviews, those interviews coming up soon, and of course more of those video tip reviews as well. So definitely yes. check her out. Links in the bio. Uh, Tossing to you, Chris, man. What, 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 where can we expect on taste take? What's the next take you're gonna give to the people out there, man? Hmm. Let's see. It might be Britney. I, honestly, I might. I might give the world Britney. Um, do it. <laughs> I, I need to do a collab with that guy that said leave Britney alone. I gotta find that kid. If he's on my video, that'd be that'd be good. Um. But yeah. So I might. I might see that. I might check that out. Besides that, I'll, I'll maybe try to do Venom. Um. And not try mm -hmm. to drag it. Um. But okay. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing Venom early. I don't, I don't have any screeners for that, but I'll, I'll have tickets for to see it at IMAX on Thursday here in the city. So I'll check that out. Um, I just did a review. If you guys are looking for some wholesome television, the nine of wholesome television on TV, I did a review for Love and Inspection Season 2. It's a story about people in the autism spectrum. Uh, they're trying to find love and go on dates and just like just like how we do. So um, if you're looking for some good TV that will 99% make you cry, check that out. It's on Netflix now. It's only six episodes. They're really quick. So... If you just want to take a break from all the some of the nonsense that we watch, it's pretty good. I do review my reviews on my channel. It's there. Check it out. <laughs> it's on there. Click on it, like it, share it, comment on it, do all that good stuff. Uh, but guys, this is this has been fun. As like I say, I just always yeah. look forward to these. Uh, even if the episode isn't that great, I still have a great time with the man and Chris, and of course everyone that joins us on the chat. So mm -hmm. again, guys, before you leave, make sure to like the video, share the video, uh, comment your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, if you watch this on the replay, uh, let us know your thoughts on the topics that we cover tonight. And uh, yeah, man, we got we got some some fun stuff. To look forward to uh, bittersweet because we're coming up to an end. Uh, but you know, we, we always find something good to talk about. So to, for Amanda, for Chris, myself, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys had a good time and uh, we'll see you next week on the next episode of what if take care, everybody. Peace y'all. Bye.